Hi. Well, I guess I'm feeling better, so I gotta get my garden into the kitchen up there. <laughs> so <laughs> I am harvesting my cabbage today. I've already pulled the rest of my beets today. My mother-in-law suggested if they haven't gotten big yet that they're gonna get woody. And I believe she's probably right. And so I need to get the cabbage into sauerkraut because I was told by an acquaintance that you should never do sauerkraut in months that end in R. And I can see what he's saying because if you don't have it at 72 degrees, it's not going to be hot enough to ferment. So I better get this cabbage in the house and I get to cutting and I've already cut my biggest one and put it into sauerkraut and it almost made a gallon itself so let me flip you around here and naturally we had trouble with cow cabbage moths this year but they really struggled this year so I'm happy with how much we're going to get for 2020 was to learn how to ferment vegetables and I was successful this year and the last couple years I've struggled to actually get it done right so 2017 we followed the ball book as in we as in my mother-in-law and I she brought her antique slaw slicer or cutter whatever you want to call it we sliced it and put it into a crock and put a plate on it and a weight and and six weeks later I had the stinkiest sauerkraut ever <laughs> and as I'm canning it putting it filling it into jars I'm like oh I'm never eating this it just stinks but I it was like so good when I opened up the jar and with my canned pork butt and mashed potatoes quick meal, right? So, 2018, I think we did the same thing with the crock, and I think my cat decided to put his paw in the brine. Half that turned out to be bad, and we just threw it all out, heartbroken. So last year, as an old shoulder injury came back to haunt me, and my mother-in-law can't cut slaw anymore, had my husband say, why don't you put it in the food processor? Don't do that. Because it just made so much room for bacteria to grow that we had a mess. And the brine came up through the pickle pipes since I was trying to use the glass jars that time. And the brine went, level went down so low that it molded on top. So I thought, if I tell you these things on what not to do, maybe I can show you what, what you should do or what is working for me. Since I got these wonderful radishes to ferment, I think we're on our way. And these are for my garden. And if you don't like radishes, you act, actually like them fermented because they don't have that bite to them and they just have that fermented taste. And then after I had this ferment successfully, I went and bought a red cabbage and a regular cabbage. And this is about a month old now, and it's delicious. And I'm learning that if you eat it raw, it is way healthier for you. And you can actually make a coleslaw out of sauerkraut. Who would have thought? The probiotics and two tablespoons of raw sauerkraut is the equivalent to a whole month's worth of probiotics from the store. All right, I can't stress enough about having everything clean. And you need a big bowl, a scale, canning salt, a good sharp knife, and a cutting board. And what I've been using is pickle pipes. They're just plastic lids that have a little bubble or little opening at the top that will let the the carbon knocks that out 
and you need a weight. So these glass hockey pucks are great for that. All right. Cut it in half. Then you want to cut the core out. And then you just want to do a one cut. And just hold the cabbage like with a bear claw. And if you don't trust yourself, I highly recommend getting a restaurant cutlass glove. This week's weather has been amazingly cool for August. I think we're in the low 80s and low humidity. I would take this every day of the year. <laughs> I really would. I just wish we had some rain. Corn is starting to curl really, really bad. And I haven't seen it this bad since we got married, I think. So since this bowl is three quarters full, You want to turn on your scale and since I already know the weight of the bowl all right so you want to take the weight of the cabbage in grams and times that by 0 0.02 to get how much salt you need so if we have 200 and or yeah 2922 grams 44 grams so if you have this bowl on your scale, you can just tear it off. So add your canning salt. And a tablespoon is about 25 grams. And we're gonna need 44. Take this kraut and think of that one person that still owes you a hundred bucks or a thousand. I don't know about a thousand, but at least a couple hundred. And you just want to take this stomper and you just go to town. Just think about that money you could have in your pocket if you wouldn't have been so generous. Just see the scales even turning back on when I'm pounding so hard. <laughs> so just just keep stomping it until you get enough juice going to go above the head of your jar here, which don't take much, but that person that still owes you money or persons, they're gonna know how mad you are. Maybe we can get a beat going. But if I'm a man or a woman of God, I should forgive these people, but you get the gif. You just wanna pound the cabbage like there's no tomorrow. And I say that it takes about three to four, three to five, maybe 10, depending on how much of a gun show you have. That's what I say to my husband when I want him to help me open a jar or something. I need the gun show. <laughs> For some odd reason, he knows what I'm talking about. He is definitely not somebody that takes a gun out into the woods and tries to shoot deer. Add ginger and carrots to this, and you could probably do onions and carrots. All right. Canning funnel, unless you can actually hit the hole without making a mess. Or you can always put your jar in the bowl. I'm starting to learn to do that for um, when I dehydrate stuff. 
it's easier when you miss the the opening. Yeah, I think that's going to be easier. And you definitely want the brine over the vegetables. You don't want any air contacting that food. So if you don't catch it, it's going to be bad. And we want to be successful, right? So learn from me and my mistakes. Because that's the only way you're going to get better is doing it yourself and learning from your mistakes. Can't stress that enough. And at least just do it. And I tell myself, what is the worst thing that can happen if you don't try? Especially when it comes to sourdough. I think after a year and a half, I might have a handle on it. Not artisan bread, but just the fact that I can feed it and not kill it. And it is hard to kill sourdough. So many of my friends say, oh, I threw it out. I'm like, why? You want to make sure this is good and clean. Make sure there is no cabbage floating on the top. I cannot stress that enough. And you cannot do a partial jar because that weight has to be pushing down that food. And this weight is only as wide as the mouth of the jar. Just checking to see if that worm was out of there. Bring up the extra protein, as my parents would say. <laughs> yeah. That's what you get when you grow your own vegetables, you know? But I think growing your own vegetables tastes way better than what you get at the grocery store. Now, if you have already have sauerkraut or something fermenting in your refrigerator, go ahead and dump a quarter cup of that juice into your new batch of sauerkraut or fermented food. It gives it a head start. And at three weeks, you might wanna start testing or tasting your sauerkraut to see if you like it, that flavor. And if you like that flavor, go ahead and put a regular lid on and put it in your refrigerator. And it'll keep for at least six months. And during COVID, I heard if you ate raw sauerkraut, it would actually slow down the process of COVID taking over your body. And it's, it helps your immune system. It's really healthy. And as you've seen, it's really simple. And I'm not saying this is the only way to go. I'm just saying this is the way I've chosen to go through all the headaches I've experienced in trying to get sauerkraut on my table. You always want to put a date of when you start something when it comes to fermenting and a lot of other things. Or time. All right, so today is 8-5. Yes, 8-5. So... Three weeks from now will be like Labor Day. Now where to store this? I suggest you put it in a pan because the brine will come out the sides and you don't want to mess wherever you put this. I am putting it in the stairwell of the landing in my basement. It's I have a dirt floor in my basement and there's shelves in the stairwell. So it's a dark place and it's at that 70 degree mark all year round because of the dirt floor. And you don't want it too hot because that will speed up the fermentation. So that's how I do it. I'm gonna snap my fingers and we're gonna be done. Thank you for stopping by the farmhouse today. I, I do appreciate your support and thank you for all your prayers and well wishes. Until next time, God bless.